switch. Team and the best and the better than the best and the fire team beat your chest. He's a schoolboy football. A team could rise and a team could fall. But they never will know until the whistle blows around. Come enjoy the show. He's a schoolboy football. For the second of three times this season, a Clarendon Derby, one of the highest schoolboy football quality, and unlike the first, a title is on the line. It's the 2023 Issa Champions Cup Final. It's only the second time in 10 years of this All-Island knockout that two Da Costa Cup teams meet in the championship match. Clarendon College, they've already won this trophy. Glenmuir gallop onto this end with stage for the first time ever. The boys take center stage, 22 of them, now joined by the dignitaries, led by the president of the Intersecondary School Sports Association, Issa Keith Wellington, Kyle Gordon, the captain of the Glenmuir team, leading the introduction of his team members. What an occasion for these young men, the sponsors. And now Malachi Douglas leads the introduction of the members of the Clarendon College outfit. They surely are not unaccustomed to these massive occasions. The fans have already started to file into the grandstand at the National Stadium. The dignitaries are about to complete their big moment this afternoon. And one of these young boys and girls, maybe one day they too will parade on this grand schoolboy football stage. Here's the national anthem of Jamaica. Clarendon College versus Glenmuir High, the final of the 2023 Issa Champions Cup. And those fans just can't wait for kickoff. The players complete official proceedings by greeting each other. They have already been well acquainted because they've already met once this season at the quarterfinal stage of the Da Costa Cup. Clarendon College came away with a 2-1 victory on that afternoon. They will hope to repeat such success here on this lovely Saturday. Stefan Duarte takes charge of this contest with Rolanza Pirat as the first assistant and Andre Smith as the second. O'Shea Nation, who took charge of the encounter when Clarendon College won in the 2021-2022 season, is the fourth official for today.
Yeah, just one change to the starting 11 of the Glenmuir side that beat Kingston College at the semi-final stage. Denzel Watson replaces Tayshawn Rowe at central midfield. As usual, they have a back four, Brendan Wallace at left back, Ramon Francis at right back, O'Neill Headley and Tavon Coleman at centre back. Watson is partnered in midfield by Jason White and their captain Kyle Gordon with Tashawn Cummings, Nyron Allen and Doreen Watson starting as the front three for the Andrew Peart coach side. Clarendon College champions only two seasons ago. Three members of this Clarendon College team started in that 21-2022 final against Dintil. And they are captain Malachi Douglas, Christopher Hall and Kahim Dixon, who among them have scored some 55 goals this season. And they do have a fabulous supporting cast as well. Rache Burrell in goal, a back four. Fullbacks Daniel Clark and Atiba Green, a Sean Bolt Barrett and Devontae Hodges are at the center of defense. Douglas is joined by DeAndre Gallimore and Tion Cupi in the middle, while Hall and Dixon have support from Jamil Ashley up front for the Lenworth Teacher Hyde led side. The two captains, Malachi Douglas for Clarendon College and Kyle Gordon for Glenmuir, joined the officials in one final friendly moment before the contest. Ricardo Chambers alongside Lejay Williams for this championship match. It's a big one, Ricardo. It's a big one. These two Clarendon schools, a lot of prestige behind them, a lot of fanfare behind both schools and have been champion, championing both of these teams as the two best on the island. So it's only fitting that they meet here in this Champions Cup final. So much quality on this pitch. I'm sure all 22 of them can't wait to get started. On either side, both these teams have knocked off the two Manning Cup finalists. Glenn Muir beat Mona at the quarterfinal stage of this competition. Clarendon College comfortably defeated Heidel in their semi-final. And so now they come face to face for the second time this season. Devontae Hodges ready no doubt for another final malachi douglas the clarendon college captain will get kickoff here we are for the 2023 champions cup final from jamaica's national stadium clarendon college in yellow and blue glenmuir high in red As Legit Williams pointed out in the build-up, as Andrew Peart pointed out in the build-up, these are two teams who love to have the football, who love to pass the football. Clarendon College in possession. Christopher Hall dangerously going forward. His right footed shot along the turf is comfortably saved by Antoine Gooden. But it's the type of start you would expect from CC. Yeah, it is. Especially that man, Christopher Hall, such a danger. Usually coming in off that right wing onto his left foot this time, starting the game off the left and cutting in. And that man in picture right now, Andrew Peart, I'm sure, would have definitely briefed his team about the quality of one Christopher Hall. But most importantly, he knows that his team have the quality to perhaps get the better of this Clarendon College team. Douglas slips this one into space. That's good football. Was asking Kaim Dixon to run onto it, and he almost got there as well. A yeah, dangerous movement from Dixon as one of the Glenmuir danger men already getting on the ball early to Jean Cummings' fall there. There's Lenworth Hyde. Tremendous success as a player, now as a coach. He is looking forward to the Triple Crown. No team has won this triple since the Ben Francis and the Walker Cup knockouts were taken 
away from the possibility of the top teams in the Manning and the Costa Cups. Both Glenmuir and Clarendon College have that opportunity this season, but at the end of this contest, only one will have that chance. Glenmuir giving the ball away in midfield. Ball slipped forward, looking for Malachi Douglas. Great work by Coleman, the big number 20 for Glenmuir. We had to shepherd off Malachi Douglas, who is an expert at those, at those late runs into the box. Speaking of expert, expert, there was Jason White getting involved early, but really good start so far by Clarendon College. Haven't said anything about him yet, but Kahim Dixon scored in the Champions Cup final. The only goal as Clarendon College beat Dintel in 2021-2022. Clarendon College looking really dangerous at the start of this contest. Christopher Hull, Malachi Douglas stringing the passes and Kahim Dixon looking to run onto them. Yeah, and that has been the trend all season, really. Kahim Dixon, the ultimate danger man in schoolboy football this season. 27 goals, 16 assists to his name as well. Glenmuir have to get going in this one to avoid him giving them any trouble. Brandon Bonis almost gave the ball away. It was good work by Ramon Francis, but now Douglas has it for Clarendon College. Christopher Hall picks it up and spreads it left side for Jamel Ashley. Clarendon College once again on the front foot. Francis now gets possession for Glenmuir, and the ball is cleared long. But Devonte Hodges has it covered. And the CC will look to settle it with Daniel Clark, who picks out Nashawn Bolt. Plays a lovely ball into midfield, right side. Gordon. Now Glenmuir dangerous to coming forward. Here's a drive. Right at goalkeeper Burrell. And that's the first warning shot from Glenmuir. Rain Watson getting it, left-footed effort. Had Naren Allen blazing in through the center. We decided to test Burrell early. Watson has scored seven goals this season for the Glenmuir team. Was injured for some part of the campaign, but has returned and, as you would expect, has become an integral part of their setup. Yeah, national under-17 striker. This one is over the top. Dixon trying to run onto it once again and again. Tavon Coleman has to do some shepherding work to keep Clarendon College at bay. And he has to be alive to that running behind from Dixon because Dixon will not give up. That's a run he's going to attempt constantly throughout this game. And his movement, I think, is one of his best attributes. Not the best of passes on that occasion from Coleman. But defensively, he has to be extremely alert in this game as a central centre-back, I think, especially when Glenmuir has the ball. We've sang the praises of Nashawn Bolt at centre-back for Clarendon College. Tavon Coleman will have to be equally as good, if not better, for Glenmuir to have a chance in this championship match. Yeah, I think all of that back three, that pseudo back three that Glenmuir like to leave behind, including this man about to take the free kick, O'Neill Headley, they have to be extremely impressive, stopping the wide threats and stopping those runs in behind as well. Ben Francis Cup knockout champions last season, Glenmuir, they have made the step up to be in the Champions Cup and the Costa Cup finals this campaign. And it can be said by many that they probably deserved a greater standing in the Da Costa Cup last season. It can be said that they were actually one of the more impressive teams, one of the top two teams participating in the competition. Only lost one game the entirety of last season, went on to win the Brent Francis Cup. And once they fell into that competition, they didn't concede a goal in their four games. Speaks a lot to their quality. There is Tajon Cummings, the skillful number 19 for Glenmuir. Comes from a wonderful footballing family. His uncle Omar Cummings scored seven goals in 35 matches for the national team. As Clarendon College come dangerously forward again with Christopher Hull, Brennan Wallace. 
wins position for Glenmuir though. Here is Brendan Wallace. Scored a pretty good goal in the semi-final against Kingston College. Many say that Malik Williams was out of position in the KC goal. Wallace took full advantage to give Glenmuir the lead. Yeah, he definitely did. And it was actually Blackwood who had occupied that position for most of last season and started this season there. But Brandon Wallace has done excellently. Oh, the ball is given away to Dixon, who fires it along the ground at Antoine Gooden. But it was right at him, and Gooden was equal to the task. The pass was on for Hull, you know. Dixon took the shot on early, but there was a pass on for Christopher Hull. Here's Naren Allen over on the right for Glenn Muir. Sends it forward for Denzel Watson. The only change to the Glenn Muir team for this final came on as a substitute in the semi final. Fifth to fifth minute substitute. He gets the goal from the onset today. It was extremely impressive in his work, Denzel Watson. And Tayshan Rowe wasn't. Too impressive, so I understand that change. Ramon Francis with the throw for Glenmuir, looking for Watson, and the ball played behind. Final touch of a rain Watson. Around nine minutes into this encounter, and we haven't called the name of Kyle Gordon as yet. Glenmuir's captain. I'm sure they would love to get him on the ball a bit more, <laughs> or a bit. To begin with and Clarendon College will hope to continue to prevent him from seeing much of the football A player of that quality you expect him to come into the game at some point Daniel Clark the left fullback for Clarendon College sprays this one forward for Jamil Ashley Ramon Francis right on him not even allowing him to turn good defensive work from Glenn Muir yeah good press and now they win possession of the football. Cummings over on the left, doing what he does best. Needs options though, because Tian Kupi is not allowing him to go forward. And the options are quite limited. Brandon Wallace provided some support, but he eventually lose possession of the football. And the Clarendon College will come away. Brilliant work from Tian Kupi. It's not going to be the first or the last time we'll say that in this encounter. Glenmore player down, needing assistance. Ten minutes into this contest. Looks as if it's Jason White. And I was actually just about to make a point about him and Cupid being the two best tempo setting defensive midfielders in schoolboy football this season. Both integral to what their team tried to do in and out of possession. Yeah, got a blow to the face there from Malachi Douglas. Really strong challenge coming from the Clarendon College captain. And a break after what has been an already captivating first 10 minutes. Yeah, captivating to say the least, really. Can already see a lot of patterns that I expected emerging. Glenmuir trying to stay, keep the field as wide as possible with their wingers. Clarendon College, their press working, especially in the first part of the first half. And then trying to get in behind with Kaim Dixon, starting lower, and then trying to spin in behind. You've already seen that a few times. And then this patient build up by Clarendon College as well. Hodges decides to go long. Christopher Hall chases. Had no chance, really. I think we're going to see a couple of those long balls or more long balls than we're accustomed to from both of these teams today because I think these are two of the best pressing teams in schoolboy football as well. So I think they're going to stifle central progression and that's really the aim for a lot of these coaches, getting the ball through the center of the pitch as much as possible, that's where you can really hurt teams. It's not the first time that they are coming face to face this campaign. Clinton Muir on the front foot. 
So too is Burrell in goal for Clarendon College. The release is quick. And CC are on their way with Jamil Ashley. Hodges. Wonder how much we'll see him go forward today. Daniel Clark. Not many teams can make it this difficult for Clarendon College to hit forward. Paul mm -hmm. Barrett ventures further forward like he likes to do. Lost possession. And Glenmuir have it through Denzel Watson, but only momentarily because Clarendon College back in possession with Christopher Hall. Really good defending this from Glenn Muir. The long ball comes into play again. Ashley. Francis defending stoutly once again. And it's Ramon Francis who wins the throw for Glenn Muir. And you can see how and why they're stifling this Clarendon unit. A lot of man marking jobs all across the pitch from Glenn Muir. You can see Kyle Gordon stationed on QP, for example. Daniel Clark further forward now. Can get the cross in. Douglas with the shot. That was blocked. Kyle Gordon picks it up in midfield for Glenn Muir. But he's unable to get the return ball as Theon QP was in the way to break it up. And now Clarendon College head forward again. Jason White is down, not for the first time in this contest. And Glenn Muir have a free kick from deep inside their own half. One thing it must be said, although Glenn Muir are defending well, sometimes when it gets into that their defensive third, I think they look a bit desperate at times how they're trying to defend. The press is good. They're keeping Clarendon College away, but I think a bit of fright comes into them, rightfully so facing a team that has scored 79 goals this season but I think they need to be a bit more calmer when defending would help them escape more situations another ball given away by Glenn Muir but Francis rallies well to put the ball into touch for a throw Fifteenth minute of this contest no goals yet But there is so much quality on display in the Champions Cup final. Long throw inside the box, Douglas. Here is Daniel Clark now for Clarendon College. Not being allowed to get a cross in from his opposite number, Nyron Allen. And Glenn Muir will have the free kick. I guess, I guess this is what happens when teams of such quality come against each other it's not only quality in terms of personnel but I think the coaching as well man marking all over the pitch by both teams not letting either team have a lick of space there were long periods in the quarterfinal match of Clarendon College versus St. George's College where STGC had Clarendon College seemingly on the ropes, but they withstood all the pressure. And when they had their opportunities, they pounced. So it's all about how long Glenn Muir will be able to maintain this for, as Kahim Dixon has possession. I was looking for Gallimore. Clark. Devontae Hodges. Moore goes further right for Atiba Green. Christopher Hall under immense pressure. Denzel Watson breaks that up for Glenn Muir. And it's one of those games as well, Lejay, where I'm sure Andrew Peart will be saying that there are some extreme danger men on this current and college team, and we will not make life easy for them. And you can see that right here, actually. Really good work done by Ramon Francis to repel Jamel Ashley. 
Dixon does well to pick up Christopher Hall. Atiba Green along the ground! It's his house! Kahim Dixon does it again! And Clarendon College are in front in the Champions Cup final! How do you stop him? The answer is, you don't. Not in a final. The build-up to that goal was brilliant by Clarendon College. They won the second ball really well. It was Kaim Dixon who started it off. Christopher Hall playing that ball to Atiba Green. And then it was Kaheem Dixon's movement. It was clinical. And the finish was the same. And it's almost as if Kaheem Dixon has channeled his inner Cindy Lapa because time after time he has delivered and he has delivered a lead for Clarendon College in this Champions Cup final. This is his eighth Champions Cup match in three seasons. That was his seventh goal. He is such a big occasion player. Kahim Dixon has scored in all but one semi-final or final that he's played in schoolboy football. Scored in the Champions Cup semi-final and final in the 2021-2022 season. Scored in the Da Costa Cup semi-final against Mannings and the final against Central last season. And even though Clarendon College lost 4-2, to Kingston College, he scored in the semi-final of the Champions Cup last season. The only time Lejay he's failed to score in a semi-final or final was in defeat to Garvey Maceo in the Da Costa Cup semi-final of 2021. And that's how you define clutch, Ricardo Chambers. Glenmore want to respond right now. 20th minute of this final. Free kick inside the box. Glancing header away from the target from Ramon Francis. That's not the direction he wanted that to go. We've seen Clarendon College Leger take leads so far this season and keep the opposition in the game for long periods. They won the semi-final 2-0, but we saw them keep handling the game for really long periods. They kept in the Da Costa Cup semi-final as well. They kept Garver Maceo in that game for long periods. Garver Maceo ultimately equalizing. And that match went to penalties. Let's see how they will go about this championship match today, having taken the lead once again. They'll have to do really well, I think, to create an opening like that again. As the, they have a goal kick here to deal with. But I think that goal all came from a breakdown in marking schemes. Because we see both teams trying to man mark. But what happens is when Arane Watson or Tajan Cummings doesn't follow their marker in a Tiba Green, it frees up that right hand side for the cross. And if you want a replay of that goal to see exactly what I'm talking about, download the Sports Max app today off the Google Play or the Apple App Store can get it you can watch multiple sports of course big finals big games we're watching a big one right now and glenby are looking for an equalizer it's going to be an anil headley corner to see if they can do it 22nd minute of this contest headley had some fantastic deliveries in the semi-final he's been good all season from these set pieces The Glenmuir number 15 whips this one in. Well dealt with. Comes out to Kyle Gordon, the captain of Glenmuir, surrounded by three Clarendon College players and invariably lost possession of the football. Here's Theon QP for CC. They set to the football with the captain Malachi Douglas chasing White. Breaks up play for Glenmuir. Good work. 22 minutes in and I think it's very clear to see who has been the better team so far. It's been a good tactical 
set up by Glenn Muir, but the execution, especially in possession, I think has been stifled excellently by Klein and College. And here they come again. They just haven't taken care of the ball well enough. Glenn Muir when they have gotten possession. And I think this is a common theme throughout Glenn Muir games this season, actually. Starting the game a bit slow, we even saw in their semi-final where Kingston College had them under a lot of pressure in the first half. There's another cross coming in. That was a timely clearance because Malachi Douglas was waiting in a sweet spot of his. Cummings now for Glenn Muir. But there is a whistle and the first yellow card of the contest will go to Christopher Hall. Yeah, there was Clarendon trying to counter press Brandon Wallace who did really well. Glenn Muir did really well to escape that situation. The advantage was on but the referee saw an opportunity there to give out the first yellow card of the game. And it goes to that man, number eight, Christopher Hall. Brandon Wallace, he has his hands full quite literally on that side. Christopher Hall so close to being player of the Da Costa Cup last season. This season has scored 12 goals, has 14 assists. And as we've already seen this afternoon, so important to the Clarendon College forward thrust. Yeah, including two of those assists in the Champions Cup semi-final against Heidel. Both to who else but Kaim Dixon, of course. Atiba Green, the man delivering the assist this afternoon. Lenworth teacher Hyde has gotten a yellow card. He seemed a little bit confused by it as Ramon Francis ventures forward from right back for Glenn Muir. And Gallimore is taken down in the middle of the park and Clarendon College take the free kick quickly. And finally, an opportunity for us all to breathe. Yeah, the Glenmore players need it. And I think Ramon Francis did a brave thing not too long ago, driving into midfield with the ball. And that's how you disrupt man marking schemes by moving players around into different zones and the defending player wouldn't expect them to be in. A lot of rotation is needed. But he was dispossessed on that occasion. I think Klein and I are playing this perfectly so far. 25 minutes completed in the Champions Cup final. The quality of this one worthy of a championship match. This one is headed on to Hall. Hall cuts inside. Couldn't down to his left. Purring it behind for a Clarendon College corner kick. It's almost as if Hall couldn't believe the space that he was given there. I think Coleman had to get a bit tighter to him. Allowed him to shoot almost on his left foot. And it was a good shot also. Antoine Gooden bailing out his centre-back. But only at the expense of a corner. Corner kick whipped in for Clarendon College. Gooden did get a touch onto it. Nashawn Bolt gets back. Let's see if he can deliver a cross. Bolt showing his attacking skills. The Clarendon College centre-back looking for another centre-back in Hodges. And the Glenn Muir will finally get an opportunity to clear. Upfield they go for Nyron Allen. He had no chance really against three current and college players. No Ashley twisting and turning and losing possession of the football. Allen looking for a Rain Watson. Well, Watson gets around his man well, but the cross is weak. And in any case, there were not enough men in red inside the box for it to be of serious trouble. Here is Kyle Gordon. Can he get accuracy on his shooting? Boots! Jason White can! He's done it again! Jason White with another strike from distance! And Glenn Moore somehow are level in the Champions Cup final! Wow, that came out of nowhere. 
absolutely Jason White for you. Absolutely out of nowhere. And that's Kyle Gordon for you as well. Teeing him up. Excellent finish. With so much control. We saw him score one early in the season, which was just raw power. This one was all finesse. And I know his coach, Andrew Peart, must be singing in his ears right now. I don't know how you do it. Making goals out of nothing at all. Jason White has equalized. And really out of nowhere, it's Glenmuir High 1, Clarendon College 1. We have a final. But we expected nothing less. And that's what quality players can provide, I think. Glenmore haven't been in the game. But as soon as they get a bit of a sniff of a goal scoring opportunity, all 11 can come to the fore. And he only scores important goals, Jason White. That one extremely important. Clarendon College, how will they respond now? Yeah, Jason White scored a goal from about 35 yards out against Manchester High in the quarterfinals of the Costa Cup. Here is Hall dribbling forward again and spanking this one over the top. Kahim Dixon not too happy. He felt he was in a good position for a pass. But Glenmuir have now scored three goals in their Champions Cup campaign. And the goals have come from three different players. Kyle Gordon, the captain in the quarterfinal against Mona Brandon Bonis in the semi-final against Kingston College and now Jason White in the final against Clarendon College. Here is Jamil Ashley, a wide Ramon Francis joins him and Ashley quickly picks out his captain and in a rare sight, Malachi Douglas gives the ball away and Nyron Allen is on his way, cuts it inside for Kyle Gordon. Gordon goes down, nothing unfair about that, says referee Stefan Duar. And it will be Clarendon College heading the other way, although Nashawn Bolt, again, uncharacteristically, even your commentator is struggling here. That's how frantic it's become. And it was excellent recovery by Atiba Green. Clarendon College were outnumbered, and the quality was up to John. Cummings was free on that left-hand side. There's a confirmation of Jason White's second goal this season. And what I love doing is comparing these players to, you know, world-class players of now and the past as well. And I think Jason White is the perfect example of what Roger would look like if he was in a red shirt playing for Glenn Muir. 31st minute of this final. We are all squared again. Glenn Muir won, Clarendon College won. Kahim Dixon, no surprise, gave... Clarendon College the lead, Jason White out of nowhere equalizing for Glenn Muir. Still not taking care of the ball the way I think Andrew Peart would want them to Glenn Muir. Hodges for Ashley. Daniel Clark arrives out wide. Nyron Allen is working overtime and Francis bails him out after he goes to ground and it's a throw coming up for CC. And it must be said, I'm sure a lot of work went into the defensive preparation for Glenn Muir. Not only by coach Andrew Peart, but his assistants, Dane Brown, Garth Young, etc. And I think they're doing really well. Well claimed by Antoine Gooden. Competent goalkeeper. Oh, he fires this one upfield, looking for Cummings. He can dazzle all right to John Cummings. We haven't seen too much of that stardust so far in this game. But more spaces are opening up, especially in the wide areas for Glenn Muir, especially in the transition. So, two teams have won this trophy multiple times. Jamaica College won the inaugural staging. It was the Super Cup in 2014 and won again in 2022. Kingston College won 2017 and 2019. 
Clarendon College trying to become the third double winner of this competition. And Glenmere looking to join the lineage of teams that has won this competition. Would only become the third Acosta Cup team to win it. And this is the ninth edition, of course, with Clarendon College and Cornwall. Cornwall College knocked at the door before they finally broke through to win in 2018. Incidentally, only the CCs have won the Champions Cup from the Da Costa Cup. Unfortunately, one of the CCs is absent. My alma mater, of course, but in due time, until then, Glenmuir in the red. They're seeing to, if they can do it for us. As I understand it, you went to Campion College, right? Indeed, Ricardo. Definitely don't understand how that came into that equation. Glenmuir with Allen cutting this across. Terrific work from the Sean Bolt again to clear. So alert and decisive in his defending. How often have we said that this campaign? And the technique as well. Could have had his hand outstretched immediately as the ball approached the box. You could see him tucking it away. So even if it did strike the hand, he would be in a good position. And now it's Glenmuir forcing this Clarendon College team to defend a bit. We all wanted to see this, and we are seeing it. Schoolboy football at its very best. Technical quality, tactical awareness. Here is a Rain Watson for Glenn Muir. Slips it forward for his captain, Gordon Hodges. Was the man who got the final touch, was it? No. Hodges did well, and it is going to be a goal kick for Clarendon College. Brilliant work from the CC number six. And Nashan Bolt has been extremely impressive so far this season, but I do think Devante Hodges has been also, especially playing out from the back. CC weren't impressive playing out from the back there. Tenzel Watson has possession. Nyron Annen. Edge of the box. Can he get across inside? No, he can't. And Hodges can't stop the ball from going behind for a Glenmuir corner kick. I think Glenmore smell blood here. This is headless territory. Once again, he spots the ball and gets ready to deliver. Numbers inside the box in red. Headley whips this one in. It was Dixon who got the header away, you know. Showing awareness on the defensive end as well. Denzel Watson was trying to slip that one in for Cummings. He got his direction all wrong. Yeah, I think both players were on different pages in that instance. Can't believe it's already 36 minutes. I was just about to say that these 36 minutes have flown by. Hips Cummings. Malachi Douglas was having none of it. Brandon Wallace picks it up for Glenn Muir. Wiggles his way out of a tight space. And now Cummings goes down under the challenge from Atiba Green. And Glenn Muir have a free kick. And referee Duar steps in to ensure it doesn't get out of control. Tempers can flare in a match of this magnitude. And especially once you start feeling the pressure, Leger Williams, sometimes you just never know. Even the best of men can react in less than ideal ways. Headley again with the delivery. The header is wide of the mark and Allen rushing onto the back post is unable to get that one back inside. But Jason White likes it. Then you are liking it. Although not seeing as much of the football, they are certainly working their way into this game. Not only because it's 1-1, but they have had a very good last four and a half minutes. 
Dixon is playing a peach of a game here, and it's not just his ability to finish. Here he is on the ball. Atiba Green. Topless in front of him. QP! His shot brilliantly blocked. Not often you see him in that position, Dion QP. I think it's because of the man marking job. It's allowing him space to get forward. I said that they have to pop up in uncharacteristic positions. And this is uncharacteristic for QP. Only one goal this season. And it was really good work by Denzel Watson to recover. Yeah, he's not having a bad game either, Denzel Watson. Ramon Francis gives up the corner kick. You have to really be well conditioned to last the distance in a game like this. Yeah, I think substitutes might end up being key in this game for both teams. Quality all over. Corner kick coming up for Clarendon College. Calimore at the near post. Dixon was trying to flick it on. Rain Watson defending it behind for another corner kick. Callimore takes it short this time. Dixon looks up and delivers a lovely ball. The header first stopped by a defender and then cleaned up by Antoine Gooden. Then Muir hit the other way. Kyle Gordon gets taken down and a yellow card. Malachi Douglas second yellow of the encounter the first one went to Christopher Hall so two of the big three for Clarendon College seeing yellow that is yellow yeah, as yellow as can be it was excellent work by Kyle Gordon once Malachi caught up I thought it was going to be difficult for him to beat him but I underestimated the dribbling ability and the talent of Kyle Gordon now both Malachi and Christopher Hall have to be quite careful. We are partially on the lights at Jamaica's National Stadium. Accurately, you would see on the outskirts of Kingston in the parish of St. Andrew. This one is fired long and high. I'm not sure if that was an attempt at goal. If it was, it was a rather ambitious one. I think maybe he was trying to fire it far post, but couldn't get the accurate dip and curl on it. Download the Sportsman's app today from the Google Play or the App Store and witness matches of this quality from schoolboy football in the land of wood and water. We are at the business end. This is the first final of the season. So many more to come. This is the All Island Knockout Final. The regional knockout finals are to come, the Ben Francis and the Walker Cup championship matches, as well as the massive ones, the Dacosta Cup for rural area teams and the Manning Cup for urban area teams. And the winners in the Olivier Shield. Here's a shot, deflection, wide. Jensen Watson was the man who finally got the shot off. But there were so many opportunities before for Glenn Muir. Yeah, Kyle Gordon did really well there. Ball floated over to him. Didn't see the opening to take the shot himself. And that shot seemed like he was going down the middle of the goal. The CC defenders were taking no chances. You saw three defenders throw themselves to block that one. And Glenn Muir ending this first half, it must be said, superbly. 42nd minute of the encounter. Another corner kick coming up for... The team in red. O'Neill Headley, like he does for almost all these set pieces, stands behind it and fires that one at the back post. It's cleared away and then back further. Comes out to Gordon. Oh, he spanked that. But it was never coming down and it flew over the top. And I'm sure Burrell in the net is very thankful that he wasn't staying down. What an effort that was by the Glenmuir captain. Slow start to the half, but he is ending it like a house on fire, it must be said. He's come to this party 
Kahim Dixon loves a bicycle kick, but it wouldn't have, he wouldn't have wanted it to land in the path of Kyle Gordon. Carnan College now on the front foot. Dixon got around Hitley. Flag is up. Carnan College feeling the pressure, but it's not the first time this campaign that they have had to withstand tremendous pressure from an opponent. And they have dug in usually. We saw it in the Dacosta Cup against Cornwall. We saw it in the Dacosta Cup against Stets. We've seen it against St. George's as well in the Champions Cup. They always find a way, Clarendon. And I'm sure they're trying to find a way to, at the very least, get to half time with the score intact. Hotchets gives this one away. Collins picks it up. Gordon to his left. Goes more central. But Watson couldn't turn with the football, and Curran and College are able to clear. Here is Gallimore for CC. DeAndre Gallimore switches over to Jamel Ashley, who does well to keep it in play. But then Brendan Wallace allowed it to run out for a throw, which he takes for Glenn Muir. Cummings. Loses out and Hull is on his way. Stopped. With quick efficiency. Atibo Green. Important interception there from Headley. For the fifth minute of this is a Champions Cup final. Clarendon College heading forward again. We are only a half in Leger, but this is already the best Champions Cup final since the COVID-19 pandemic. Yeah, for sure, in terms of quality, in terms of precision and tactics, and the atmosphere has been quite brilliant also. Hutches shields that one for his goalkeeper, who was a little bit delayed in responding. Borel. We look to the fourth official. Two minutes of time to be added. And we have started those two minutes. We barely had time to breathe in this first half. End-to-end -end football. Curran College players not too happy with the calling on the part of Stefan Duarte. The Glenmuir drummers are out in all their glory. The boys on the park are feeling the beat, including the captain, Kyle Gordon, who has really gotten into this contest in the latter stages of the first half. Yeah, followed by QP again, who is staying in really close quarters. It's clear that both teams have come with specific game plans, specific players they want to target and attempt to keep quiet. But as you know, with quality, there's always a way. And at both ends of the park, some key men have found a way. And so we're at 1-1 in the closing seconds of the first stanza. Throw for Clarendon College. Free kick coming up for Clarendon College. And this quite likely to be the final action of the first half. They took it short. 
And that's the half-time whistle. What a thrilling first 45 minutes at the National Stadium. Clarendon College and Glenn Muir have put on a terrific show so far. And it's not that we expected anything less. But so often, these massive games do not live up to their billing. But not tonight. Not so far. No player bigger than this one this season. Kahim Dixon missed the Champions Cup himself. Got the ball rolling for Clarendon College. But Jason White with only his second goal of the season, assisted by his outstanding captain, Kyle Gordon, restored parity for the boys in red. And so they stride away in unison, knowing that they are very much in this championship match. And the Triple Crown, that both may be in a very limited way, be thinking about, especially at this stage, is still alive for both Clarendon College and Glenn Muir. But we still have 45 minutes to play, and who knows, maybe even penalties. Business end of the scoreboard football season in Jamaica. A number of finals coming up, starting with the Walker Cup final on Sportsmax 2 and Sportsmax Plus. San Andrew Technical versus Jamaica College on Friday at 3.30 p.m., 4.30 ECT. That will be followed by the Manning Cup final, Mona versus Heidel. A first-time champion to be crowned 7 p.m. 8 ECT. Then on Saturday, we start with the Ben Francis Cup Final on Sportsmax 2 and Sportsmax Plus. Not too sure how many saw this coming. McGraw versus Froome Technical, 3.30 p.m. 4.30 ECT. And then the Da Costa Cup Final, a repeat of the Champions Cup Finale. Clarendon College versus Glen Muir at 7 p.m. 8 ECT. And we have it for you on your home of champions. Thoroughly engrossed by the first 45 minutes in the Champions Cup final. Glenn Muir versus Clarendon College locked at one apiece. And up to the tremendous quality, technically and tactically, on the field, on the bench, in the coaching corner that we saw in the first 45 minutes, we simply cannot wait for the final 45 minutes to Jay Williams. Yeah, and I suspect that a lot of those halftime team talks, I'm not sure if they saw my keys to the game beforehand, but I think key keys to the game, number two for each team is extremely important. For Glenmere, I said, dictating the tempo. I think although they grew into the game well, I think too often they were trying to play at Clarendon College's tempo as opposed to playing at theirs. And then for Clarendon College, it's all about patience. Riding the wave, Glenmore did get the better of them at the end of the first half. But they've shown time and time and again that they're capable not only of scoring late goals, but scoring important goals at the right time. The Formula of Champions, so they'll have to ride out this wave. And so we begin the second half of this thrilling Champions Cup final. Christopher Hall in possession for Clarendon College. He skips around Brandon Bollis as if he wasn't even there and does brilliantly to get inside the box and get a cross in. And Glenn Muir able to cover and now come away with possession of the football. And Malachi Douglas has to be careful here. He's already on a yellow card. Yeah, Jason White did well to evade his man-marking responsibility there. Malachi Douglas and Jason White have been inseparable, really, to start this game. Similar theme in the second half, apparently. But Malachi Douglas has to be careful, and I think if he wasn't yellow-carded initially in the first half, 
you would have been seeing yellow there. Yeah, I think the referee would have thought about the fact that he was on al already on a yellow. Then you're in possession. They ended the first half brilliantly on the front foot. The team in charge. Clarendon College heading the other way. Here is Hull again. No, he has more space to operate. Dixon has arrived. Can't pick him out. Avrain Watson picks it up for Glenmuir. Callimore challenges him. Watson and Callimore. Now Hodges deals with matters at the back. Not well enough to evade giving up a throw in. Good work by Watson. One man transition machine he can be. Hodges marking Orain Watson tightly. Glenn Muir winning a corner kick to start this second half. Neil Headley. You expect to be the one to take it. He's been the one to take them all so far. Has had some good deliveries, not quite as good as we saw in the second half against KC, but it's the second half now. Let's see what he can deliver. Five boys in red inside the box. The captain, Gordon, is waiting just outside. He enters and will lurk at the back post as the delivery comes in. And it's comfortably headed away. And you can see how much Clarendon College respects the threat of Glenn Muir from set pieces. Every single Clarendon College player was in that box defending that corner. Ramon Francis wins a throwing for Glenn Muir over on the far side. The crowd has gotten somewhat bigger than when this contest just got underway. The 11 that took the field for both teams still on the park at the start of the second half. No substitutions quite yet even though there is some amount of quality on both benches that could prove impactful later on. Duar has a decision to make here again. Decides to have a strong talking to. Hodges like an obedient chap listens nods in the affirmative night run allen the man heading to the turf from devontae's push what is for glenn Muir. Scored in the semi final. Big Salt is captain Gordon. Gordon to Watson who goes down. And this will be a card. It's red. Kernan College's influential center back sees red. It's not the first time this season was red carded in the round of 16 against St. Elizabeth Technical as well. This is a massive moment in the Champions Cup final. He's an aggressive defender, loves to lunge in. We've seen that several times. Kyle Gordon slipping in Watson. And that's definitely a foul. It's just a question. It's just a question if Daniel Clark was going to recover, if he could have recovered. But in the eyes of Duar, he says no. And Christopher Hall shepherding off Nashan Bolt. If Lindworth teacher Hyde was unhappy with the refereeing before, then surely 
significantly more so now. That is a massive blow, not just for tonight, but for a week from now when these two teams meet again in the Da Costa Cup final. And I have to ask Ricardo, do you think that Daniel Clark was in a position to recover there? I don't think so. I, I would have to agree with you, actually. I really don't think he Especially was. due to the angle which he would have to come from. And that's a huge, huge blow. Kyle Gordon scored from a position very similar to this one to book Glenmore's spot into the semi-final against Mona High. Huge opportunity now for Glenmore. 53rd minute. Kernan College down to 10. The strength of their meta will need to be shown tonight if they are to lift this cup for a second time in three seasons, for a second time in their history. I do try to say in these situations, don't overthink it if you're Glenn Muir. But it's a great chance. Gordon is there, Headley is there. Fantastic. Captain Influential has hammered that one home. Kyle Gordon, not for the first time in this Champions Cup campaign, has delivered from a free kick, but this one so much more convincing than the one in the quarterfinals. And this man in red, after providing the assist for the first goal, has danced all over this pitch to provide the hammer blow for the second and Glenmuir High all of a sudden have climbed and college on the ropes Glenmuir High all of a sudden are 2-1 up in this Champions Cup final Kahim Dixon must be wondering how his team is behind in this final and remember they are down to 10 and talking about 10, that is Glenn Muir's number 10's 10th goal of the season. And I tell you what, it was worth a perfect 10. Here's Christopher Hall. Can he step up to the plate for Clarendon College? There's individual quality out there. And it's now time for them to step up. Brandon Wallace on the defensive end, standing tall. On this quarter goal last season, Kyle Gordon, the Glenmuir captain, and Jopir at the start of the season said for them to go all the way, for them to do well, he needed to step up, he needed to get more goals. And my goodness me, hasn't he been influential? As seen with the way he has performed tonight, a slow start, but he's gathered momentum in a serious way. Here's Malachi Douglas. He is on a yellow card. Let's not forget that. Especially since Karen and College are already down to 10. Christopher Hall is also on a yellow card. And there are a mountain of issues for Karen and College to overcome and rally if they are to beat this Glenmuir side tonight. And those issues are massive, actually, Ricardo because they're not only from a tactical point of view, they're also from a personnel point of view. What are they going to do now in terms of their pressing structure, their defensive structure? They haven't subbed on anyone. You have to point out to replace both. 
So what are they going to do to counteract this Glenmuir team who already seemingly had the tactical advantage? Here's Darren Allen in position. Devontae Hodges gets position for Clarendon College and he's venturing far forward here and now he's taken out. And the yellow card will come here. I think that was Denzel Watson, was it? With the challenge, it was Denzel Watson. The little man taking on the big man. Glenn Muir in a no-nonsense mood. I'm not quite sure if he had to do that, you know. One thing that Glenn Muir, two things that I think Glenn Muir will have to avoid for the rest of this game. Well, I'm going to say three things. One, being complacent. Two, being rushed. I said tempo is important, even more so now. And three, don't give away silly opportunities. And this might be a silly opportunity. What can Clarendon muster up here? Clinton, you're leading by two goals to one, having to come from behind. DeAndre Callimore delivers this one right into the hands of Antoine Gooden in the Glenmuir goal, and he has very competent hands. Here is Cummings. Wasn't allowed to spend a second on the ball before Atiba Green intervened. Dixon. Dixon again. His goal must feel like ages ago now. Yeah. Wicked away from two and three. Hall inside for Green. Well, Green does well here, but eventually loses possession. And Kyle Gordon, the Glenmuir captain, has it. He's been chased. Challenge coming from behind. All ball. Clarendon College head forward. The captain trying to find a way through Malachi Douglas. Twisting and turning, needs help. You can see a lot of individual play coming from the Clarendon College players now. It's almost as if individually they are trying to take on this game as opposed to the fluent team football that we've become accustomed to from them this season and recent seasons. Yeah, because when you lose a centre-back, especially to a red card, it changes the entire structure of your team. Who is going to stay forward? Who is going to come into the midfield? Especially, as I mentioned, with man-marking responsibilities. They have to decide quickly if they're going to ditch those responsibilities. They have to decide quickly who is going to pick up who. What is the zonal defense is going to be like if they're going to switch from those responsibilities? And they have to do that quickly because of that man you just saw on screen in Andrew Peart, who many may see as a tactical mastermind as you see a substitution taking place. Daniel Clark, the left back, today in Williams. A goal scorer in this competition already this season against St. George is coming on. He has scored the third goal in the 3-1 victory against St. George's College. He did come on as a substitute then as well. Did today in Williams. Flag is up. Has scored five goals this campaign, Williams. And Lenworth Hyde is hoping that his introduction into this contest will be impactful for Clarendon College. Just saw a shot of Andrew Peart. There were so many questions raised about him when he took over as the head coach of Jamaica College for just one season. They went trophyless that campaign and it was the first time in a long time that they had gone trophyless following the glory years of Miguel Coley. But he's gone to Glenn Muir, he got his own mandate and my goodness me isn't he delivering. That's gonna be Hodges has to be careful here. That's a yellow card. And they are piling up for Clarendon College. That is the third yellow to go with Nashawn Bolt's red. It's not often that we cite Clarendon College as an indisciplined team, but it has to be said today, they have shown a lot of spurts of indiscipline. They are flustered. They have not seen this before. 
They haven't seen this this season. They haven't seen this since the John Richards, and they're flustered. Clint Muir on the front foot again. It was a year ago on a night very much like this at this very venue that whisper tore them apart. And now the entire Glenmuir team is doing the same. Here is Nyron Allen around to Dane Williams. The cross has too much weight on it. Forces coming away. Here's the little maestro for Headley. Headley has all the time in the world to deliver a cross. And it was a fabulous delivery as well, but Arane Williams couldn't hit it on target. And that is where it should at least have been. Arain Watson. Three Glenmore players piling up at that back post. Ryan and College don't seemingly, it's almost as if they're playing with less than 10. So many empty spaces here's for Glenmore to work with. Yeah, here's Williams. Cross coming in. You can see as well on the part of the Clarendon College players that every mistake is at the moment being greeted with a measure of condemnation from teammates and you never want to see that. They're trying to figure it out as Cupid trying to get across in. And it will be a goal kick for Glenmuir. Six to third minute. He's seen it all before. And this is why he's been so cautious when conversations about the Triple Crown has come up. He has said, we have to take it a game at a time. He's been around long enough as a player and as a coach to understand the importance of staying in the moment. Oh, here's a, an opportunity. That could have been a catastrophic mistake. And Kahim Dixon pounced. Ricardo Chambers, what was the first thing I said Glenmuir need to not do? Be complacent. And that is the definition of complacency from Antoine Gooden. Arrogance even. What is he doing? This game is far from one. Hotchis sends this ball long. And a too much weight on it. Six the fourth minute of the encounter. Oh, what a match this is. What a final. What a Champions Cup final. This was the reason for this competition to get the best teams from across the island, both the Manning and the Costa Cup, coming face to face. There is no doubt that the two best teams in schoolboy football this season are parading on this grand stage tonight and they are displaying it in no uncertain manner but the team that most many expected to boss this contest is not the one doing it it's Pierce Glenmuir who are showing real class out in the middle tonight and it has to be said a lot of people came to me before the game and we're asking do Glenmore have a chance and I had to say with the quality that they have here's Gordon slipping this one for Naran Allen went away from goal though and Romario Thompson who is also on at centre back for Clarendon College was able to cover and prevent a cross from coming in let me have to be a bit more crisp in their actions. But that was a lot of space opening up for Gordon and Allen. And Hutchins is venturing forward with more regularity, something that you would see Nashon both do quite a lot. That speaks to the individuality that we've been seeing since the red card. Or maybe he's just taking over the role of Bolt. The one with the explorative freedom. Six 
sixth to seventh minute of this thrilling Champions Cup final. Glenmuir lead Carnan College by two goals to one. Your captain. His entire family is watching on the Sportsmax app. You can download it today as well from the Google Play Store or the App Store. You don't want to miss matches like these, do you? OJ Williams and I won't because we're always here. Here's the John Cummings. He'll be in one next week as well. But you'll get to watch the replay. You know, one thing must be said, Ricardo. I'm watching this game tick on and tick on and tick on. And it's making me salivate even more for that Dacosta Cup final next week. Hold your horses, young man. <laughs> There's still a title to be decided here tonight. And as you pointed out, it's far from done. Far from. But it could be with another pivotal Glenmuir blow. My good friend Dwight Jeremiah would say the next goal will decide the match. <laughs> Six to eighth minute, Glenmuir lead by two goals to one. Their fans have come in their numbers. Karnan College! More specifically, the captain, Malachi Douglas, spanking it over the top. On his weaker side, Malachi Douglas, who does have a good weak foot. You saw evidence of it there. And College still pushing. Set pieces might be the way. There are those who would say he struck it with his weaker right foot. Then you're coming at the other end. And they'll have a corner kick. Or will they? Flag is up offside. Relief for Clarendon College. Oh my goodness me, they need it. Clarendon College with another substitution. Jason Haynes is it? Justin Hales, who scored the opening goal of the quarterfinal game against St. George's College, is on the park in the 69th minute. Here is Cummings. I haven't seen much of his skills tonight, but here's a little bit of what he can do. It's the final product that has to improve for Tejon Cummings. Carnan College going the other way with Dixon. Steps this one through for Hall. The flag stays down, does it? Hall trying to find Dixon again. Might have been unselfish that time and gone for ball. For a second, I thought he was in an offside position, but the flag never came. This game is still frantic. That was a good opportunity for Clarendon College and now Glenmuir can put the game to bed! Irene Watson doesn't! What another brilliant opportunity! And you can't keep missing these chances against Clarendon College. They're giving them a lifeline. Time and time again. Just on side. Yeah, just a shade. Big chance here. It's Derrick Henry scoring that one in. Derrick Henry, the Glenmuir number 12. Here is Dixon. Decides again, shooting, no he shoots! Off the left upright!
Cupid as well to win it. Wow. Ricardo Chambers, I'm glad you're the commentator. Because I, I was absolutely speechless in that passage of play. Time and courage still pushing forward. They want the equalizer. Here is Hall. Are they beginning to turn the screws here? Atiba Green, there are three men inside the box waiting. The keeper comes and does brilliantly, Antoine Gooden. Even if you're in your living room, you're standing. This is not a match to sit for. Kahim Dixon with a lovely right footed drive off the left upright. Karen and College keeping it in play with the captain Malachi Douglas. Shielding the ball beautifully and then a left footed chip shot along the ground out of nothing coming off the right upright. And then Dixon unable to turn it off. Somehow unable to turn it off. There is fight in Chapatan after all. And I was questioning what type of changes Clarendon College could have made to alleviate this Glenmere threat. And I'm not saying that they're alleviating the attacking threat of Glenmere. But it must be said the change that I have seen is a simple one. You allow your best players to play in the close proximity of each other. And we have seen Kaim Dixon, Christopher Hull, and Malachi Douglas all occupy a very central berth close together. And those are the three players causing absolute havoc to this Glenmuir defense. But Glenmuir themselves have had chance after chance and somehow have not extended this 2-1 lead. Remember that Clarendon College are down to 10 players. Glenn Muir, they also brought on Derek Henry. And now they're getting ready to bring on Aurel Miller, who has scored seven goals this season. And Miller will replace Tejon Cummings. That substitution is complete. He's got some skill about him as well, Aurel Miller. Andrew Pierre not settling, it seems, for just the 2 1 advantage. Here he is, Miller. Has to turn the ball back, delivery inside. Now cleared away, comes out to QP. Kupi was hoping to release Douglas, but it got nowhere near him. Hutches, bounces, Watson off the ball, and wins a goal kick for Clarendon College. 75th minute of this final. Premier lead by two goals to one. The last 10 minutes have been unbelievably good. And trust me, this has been a classic. Here is Derek Henry. Derek Henry Jr. His father, Derek Sr., was part of the Cornwall College all conquering Triple Crown team in 2001. He was born and raised in the USA, Derek Henry Jr. But has joined this Glenmuir team. Karen and Conley trying to deny them though. Won't get a penalty there. Good defending. And it had to be. Headley was hand out, can't pass that hand. I know we shouldn't talk too much about the Triple Crown, Lejay. But if Derrick Henry, if Glenmuir wins the Triple Crown, and Derrick Henry, like his father, would be a Triple Crown winner. Nice way to draw a level with the dad. Hale sends this one forward. Dixon. Justin Hales dribbling 
through a sea of red gets taken down and a free kick coming up for Clarendon College. This might be a really big opportunity. We saw Kingston College rattle the crossbar in the semi-final against Glenmuir. And we know that Clarendon College has capable free kick takers just like this man. The Sportsmax at moment brought to you by the Sportsmax app and no better moment than Kyle Gordon's perfect 10, his 10th goal of the season. Glenn Muir's number 10, Captain Fantastic, giving them the 2-1 advantage. Carmen College desperately pushing for the equalizer and they have a free kick of their own and it's taken skips the crossbar and goes over from Devontae Hodges he's really showing another side to his game since the red card given to Nashawn Bolt probably couldn't have taken that one much better Devontae Hodges great technique up and down but just not down soon enough. Problems as well for Romaria Thompson, the current and college substitute. Looks to be hopping around the tall number 20 in defense. And that's on a good sign for a team that's already down to 10. And have made three substitutions to this point. Dixon. Not forthcoming, and one is one possession for Glenn Muir. Here he is again, Brandon Wallace, Captain Gordon. Oh, he's notched off the ball, and QP heads forward, lays it off to Hall. Hall back to QP. His shot is blocked by. Here's another one coming in. It was Anil Hitler with the block. Here is Dixon. Here's Hall. Here's Hodges. Hodges. That's a real letdown. But I guess you can't blame him for shooting. Yeah, that's not what was required. I think if he had gotten it under control initially, I wouldn't have minded the shot, but he was clearly reaching for that one, Devontae Hodges. And that was more good play from Clarendon. And I'm not going to say outright that they've been the better team over the last... 10 to 15 minutes because they've conceded so many chances but they have really grown into this one yet again not many thought that Clarendon College could be taken to school but in many ways they have been taught quite a lesson so far tonight but the exam is not quite yet done and there's a final section worth more marks than any other And Clarendon College are attempting to maximize on that portion. We are in the 81st minute. Green with the throw for CC. Dixon gets inside the box. Ball cleared away. Gordon sends it long for Glenn Muir. Borrell is off his line and makes a big mistake. That is the mistake. Watson runs into Glenmuir history and Trapeard's men have surely put the final nail in the Clarendon College coffin
Jocelyn Muir, it's 3-1. And this one is what would you call it? Signed, seen, and delivered. That mistake from Burrell. He didn't know what he was doing, but you know who did? Orain Watson. The finish was calm. It was precise. It was as if he had done it a million times before, and maybe he has. But none more important than this one for Glenn Muir. And that goal might have just confirmed Glenn Muir High winning their very first Champions Cup trophy. Surely, surely, that is the goal that decides it. Surely there is no way back for Clarendon College. They will fight though. Here's Christopher Hall. Chips it inside the box. That's easily cleared away. Comes out point to Atiba Green. Four waiting inside the area, but the delivery can't get to any of them. Here is Irene Watson. No tackle up by QP. And QP does brilliantly. It's not often that Rache Burrell has a lot of work to do. Here's Malachi Douglas. The Clarendon College captain. Looking for space to shoot. Can't find it. And now the Glenmuir captain. Looks for Watson up front. He was well tracked by Romaria Thompson, the substitute. Glenmuir might be looking to run a riot in this one. I was saying to you at half time that I was a bit surprised. Clarendon College usually one of the best travel teams in schoolboy football. This Glenmuir high team and support has taken over the national stadium. And their players have responded with what must be said, an excellent performance. We knew this would be a terrific game. I'm not sure we thought it would be this good. It's rivaling some of the best games we have seen in schoolboy football for the last decade and a half. And believe me, we've seen some good ones. And it's not recent, Sibias. The quality has been that good. You know, the quality in this game, personnel-wise, I think this game has had everything that you would want or you expect from a classic schoolboy football game. The drama, the mistake, the quality goals. And we have grown to see some exceptional coaching as well. The fans engaged. This has been an instant classic in the schoolboy football realm. Derrick Henry keeps that one in play. Coach Andrew Peart just standing at the edge of his area, really getting his boys to try and calm down. They know they're in the ascendancy, but he knows it's still not over. And one goal could quickly turn to two, and then you never know. The Glenmuir players asking the fans to keep going as they fight to the finish. I would say trying to hold off Clarendon College, but that wouldn't be an appropriate descriptor for what has happened tonight. From about 25 minutes, they have been the dominant side. CC looking for a goal to stay in it. They'll have a corner kick. You're exactly right, Ricardo. And their coach spoke about it before the game, Andrew Peart. He just wants his team to settle into this one. It's two possession-based teams. And whichever team is able to settle for the longest, that's the team that will come out on top. And we saw after 25 minutes, after 30 minutes maybe, this Glenmuir team has settled. They settled into a rhythm. Kane Dixon trying the spectacular. 
and that rhythm has more than been good enough to be winners of this final. They've gotten better with each passing minute in this encounter. It's like starting at the back of the field in an 800 meters, but by the time you hit the home stretch, you're tearing away from the rest. You know all about that one, Ricardo. And Glenn Muir, join me in that knowledge tonight. Here is Christopher Hall for Clarendon College. Slips this one forward for Malachi Douglas. Douglas trying to shoot. Gets it inside to QP, who slaps. Well, today in Williams, it was actually. Who snatched at it, took a deflection, and it went over the top for a Clarendon College corner kick. Those Glenmuir fans, extremely confident at halftime. One fan said they would win it by three goals to one. They are leading by three goals to one in the 88th minute. Clarendon College with a corner kick. This one floats into the back post. The header is right at Antoine Gooden. And the Glenmuir fans will cheer on. each passing moment that they deny Clarendon College and they are denying them all right Clarendon College here is the captain Douglas will he shoot from range gets it to Hall Hall wants it on the left foot goes back to Douglas but it's wide of the mark In a game full of really good Glenmuir performances, not only on the pitch but on the bench as well from the coaching staff. But speaking about the players on the pitch as they come and get another attack, Aurel Miller trying to break through and he gets taken down. Oh, he is the one judge to have committed the infringement. Yeah, but so many good performances. I think Jason White has been superb as he would have, have to, had to be if Glenmore were going to get anything out of this game and they're winning it so you know that he's been great I think a key member of this team as well, Brandon Wallace the key tactical tweak of Glenmore is to invert their left back into midfield and even that free kick the chance that came from it it was a Brandon Wallace inversion and then progression of the play through the midfield to Kyle Gordon, who then slipped it into Rain Watson and then was taken down. So I think Brandon Wallace has been fantastic. But I think our producers, I think our producers did an excellent job in picking the player to watch for Glenmuir for this game. Because he came to the party a slow start. But once he got going, their captain Kyle Gordon a goal and an assist he has been absolutely superb yeah six minutes to be added on six minutes for Glenmuir to hold on or even pull further away to their first ever Champions Cup title and I don't know how you would describe the Ben Francis Cup success of a year ago to Jay Williams but I'd venture to say that they are within touching distance of their first major schoolboy football trophy at this level since they won the Costa Cup in 2012. Here's Carnan College. Here's Christopher Hull. Is there still to be more drama? Kaheem Dixon takes this one in. For Malachi Douglas, who got a boot onto it, it wouldn't have mattered because the flag was up for offside. It must be said, Klein and College have tried. They did really well, especially their front three in this formation since going 10 men down. Malachi Douglas, Christopher Hall, Kahim Dixon, but it just hasn't been enough. They've been unlucky, yes, but it hasn't been enough. And Glenmuir have been the Costa Cup winners three times. 2004, a triple crown team, 
2006 and in 2012. They have the most Ben Francis Cup winners medals, Glenn Muir. Two Olivia Shields. But I'm sure this trophy, this new trophy in their cabinet will be oh so sweet to them. And especially because of who they are turning over tonight. They are turning over a team that many said would not be beaten this season. There have been suggestions that they've looked like a cup team even. Suggestions by me, Ricardo. But it has to be said, this is the first time, their first loss of the season. And guess who did it? A team who from last season, many said, should have been competing with them in the Dacosta Cup final. And a team that has taken that disappointment from last year and put all of that fuel into their bellies, into their legs, and has delivered now on the first of two, maybe even three big stages that they'll be on this season. And those fans, they're loving it. Well, you are not the only one that said it about Clarendon College. That much I'll tell you as Glenmuir get ready to make another change Denzel Watson is coming off he's been replaced by DeAndre Johnson incidentally DeAndre Johnson is their leading scorer this season with 11 goals and that goes to show their strength in depth their leading goal scorer has not been really present over the last couple of games Glenn Muir left it late to get the better of Mona in the quarterfinals RL Miller inside the box. Oh, he does brilliant. They told you he has some skills. RL Miller really good with the ball at his feet, but the clearance now comes only as far as the captain, Gordon. Here is DeAndre Johnson. His cross is cut out. But they left it late. Lejeune narrowly got the better of Mona by a goal to nil in the first round. The semi-final stage, they got the first goal, but Kingston College responded shortly after, and they had to do it on penalties. And I'm not sure after that game, many saw this performance coming. But this performance has been of the highest quality, and definitely after 30 minutes, Dixon goes down. Stefan Dorr points to the spot. And there shall be more drama in this instant classic. Can it be a ray of light? A ray of hope even. Their captain Malachi Douglas immediately goes for this one. And they'll have some time after the penalty is taken as well. But first he needs to convert. Good work from Dixon. Antoine Gunn out and that's a sure penalty. Malachi Douglas stands behind this one. Gooden gave up the penalty. Now he's trying to save it. There is still life in Chapleton. Kern and College are within one. The problem is they only have a minute and a half or two, if they're lucky, to get another one. It's 3-2 to Glenmuir. What a final. What a final. As the captain Malachi Douglas converts his 17th goal of the season. One of three players who started in this Carnan College lineup tonight. Who played in the final. Who started in the final. When they beat Dintil by a goal to nil. Here's Carnan College heading forward again. Dixon trying to turn in the strike. Saved. The follow-up blocked. Curran and College are hunting for the equaliser. And they were so close. That's it. That is it. It's a red parade. Clean your heart.
Thai have won the Champions Cup for the first time in their history. They become the third rural area team to do it of the Cornwall College and the team they have been tonight, Carrington College. Many, many fell. Carrington College for the best team in schoolboy football. But they have been dominated by Andrew Pierce Glenmuir. Glenmuir winning by three goals to two. And the Jay Williams, we have witnessed a schoolboy football classic of the very highest order. And I don't think we're doing it any justice even by calling it a classic. The range of emotions this game has taken me through and I don't support any of these two teams. It has been an amazing football from a tactical point of view. So much individual quality. We had the drama with the red card, great goals all over. The penalty at the end. And then Clyde and College even almost equalized. What a game. To the very final whistle, but it's Glenn Muir. We take a breath. Now we relive it. Stefan Duar taking charge of this game. Clarendon College, the first to venture forward with Christopher Hall, his right footed shot saved by Antoine Gooden in goal. The opening goal came on 18 minutes and it came for Clarendon College, a play that started with their influential forward, Kahim Dixon, out to Christopher Hall, Hall to Atiba Green, Green across the face of goal. And Kahim Dixon knocking it in for his seventh career Champions Cup goal, his fourth of this campaign. And he continues his fantastic form and history of scoring in all finals he's participated in in the last three seasons. Klenmuir took a while to get into this one. But their captain, Kyle Gordon, finally got going, laid this one off to Jason White. And White placed it beautifully into the far corner. Rashid Burrell had no chance in goal, and Glenmuir were level at 1-1. That came completely against the run of play. It came out of nowhere, as we said at the time. But from there... It was for the most part Glenn Muir, the captain, Gordon, coming to life. His left footed shot over the top. And then in the second half, a rain Watson taken down by Nashawn Gold. He saw a straight red. And the outstanding national youth player, Carnan College centre back, stunned by the red card. But Carnan College would be even more stunned by the quality of this Kyle Gordon free kick ferociously poured into the back of the net his 10th goal of the season a strike worth a perfect 10 and Glenmuir were in front Aurene Watson should have done better with that headly delivery Malachi Douglas was fighting for Clarendon College at the other end that one was over the top and every time you thought you had seen everything in this game we just kept seeing more 3-1 at this stage to Glenn Muir and Kahim Dixon hit the left upright. And in the same play, the captain Malachi Douglas struggling to find space, somehow found space. And his shot hit the right upright. Kahim Dixon couldn't turn it home. And maybe that told us it wasn't Clarendon College's night. And then this mistake. I guess there can be no great game without an arrow. And it came from the Clarendon College goalkeeper, Ashe Burrell. He timed this well, he got there, and the clearance was terrible. And Doreen Watson capitalized for his eighth goal of the season, the first in the Champions Cup this campaign for Glenmuir High, and that made it 3-1. The red party had begun. Kahim Dixon won a penalty for Clarendon College. Antoine Gooden wasn't happy with the call. Malachi Douglas stepped up. And a 
produced his 17th goal of the campaign. And Carnan College weren't done yet. 3 2 at that stage. They would have one final shot and one brilliant save by Gooden. And then the final whistle came. What a match. What a final. Carnan College, 21 shots, 6 on target. Glenmuir, 9 shots, 4 on target. 23 falls in the game, 14 of them committed by Clarendon College. They had three yellow cards and a red card, Clarendon College. Five corners for CC, four for Glenmuir. The Glenmuir goalkeeper, Antoine Gooden, had to make four saves. Just one for the Clarendon College goalkeeper, Rache Burrell. And in terms of the possession, Glenmuir, 55% to 45. But the stat that matters not just in this game, but for a season, for a coach, for a set of players, is that Glenmuir win by three goals to two. What a game. What a game. There is no doubt who the player of the match is. It is the man who led from the front for Glenmuir High School, the captain, Kyle Gordon. He deserves KFC. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Definitely, Ricardo. Thank you so much. And uh, yeah, the man of the match, Kyle Gordon. Andre Roper will make the presentation on behalf of KFC. Yeah, let me have a chat with you now, Kyle. Fantastic game, Kyle. Last season, when we spoke at the Ben Francis Cup final, you told me that you wanted it all this season. Job is half done. We beat. The we job beat. is half done for you. Yes, right now it's just to keep focused because we have our next final and don't want to get carried away, even though it's a good feel, always a wonderful feeling to win. Yeah, we have our speculation, but I want to know from your perspective exactly where did this game turn in favor for Glenn Muir? When we equalized. Yeah, I, 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 I want to ask you as well now, how was your regime to rest and recuperate for the upcoming, the Costa Cup final going to be like? Well, as I said, just keep focused, don't get carried away and be stronger in the next game. Well done to you, Kyle. Richly deserving of the Man of the Match Award. Thanks. Well done. Yeah, so that was Kyle Gordon there, the man of the match. Excellent game he had for Glenmuir, the captain leading from the front. Let's hear, have a chat now with Coach Lenny Hyde. Coach Hyde, you went up early, basically, and uh, then from there, things started to really shake up after that equaliser. Do you think you lost it at that point? No, nah, man. No, nah, man. Even when we went down, we still got numerous of chances. We could have won the game. Even when we were down, we could have won the game, but... I must be smart to my team who played well right through the 90 minutes, even with the man advantage against us. I think we tried our best, but it wasn't meant to be, you know? Yeah, I have to ask you about the red card decision, though. Did you agree with it? I don't want to go there, so, you know. I don't want to mention nothing about the ref. I just want to talk about my team and what we're going to do for the next game. Yeah, so well, let's talk about that next game. You yeah. play here again during the week, at the end of the week. Yeah. How are you going to prepare them now for that match? Yeah, man. We, we, we just rest them, get them replenished and feed them up and, you know, get them motivated again. You know? All right. Coach, tough luck to you. We'll see you again later yeah, on man. this week. All right. Yeah, that was Coach Lenny High there. And I know we have a, a word with Coach Andrew Peart. Coach, last season, Ben Francis Cup. This season, Champions Cup. You must be a very, very proud man about that. Well, yes, to God be the glory. Um, as I said from the start of the season, it's a journey, a journey of three years. Um, and we're very happy to be in this moment right now. Yeah, so I thought the boys played a fantastic game. Especially coming from behind, I always knew that Clarendon College would start strong. Um, so we're hell-bent on denying those opportunities. But a situation presented itself for them that we spoke about and they capitalized on it. But it's about the desire because I thought in the first half we weren't playing as how we're supposed to be couldn't control the game but we got a lot of final third entries and good second balls recuperation which led to some threatening situations set pieces shots on goal so yeah yeah you pretty much said everything so let me just ask you ask you about how you're going to get to uh, work through the turnaround time which is going to be very short you may Klein and College, meet Klein and College again in the, the Costa Cup final. What is it going to be this like? This time it's actually desirable. It's one week between games. Um, so we'll have a week to prepare. It's a tough task because this is not a Champions Cup final against another team. Then you have somebody else in the, the Costa Cup. It's the same team. So we have to be better than we were today. But 
Um, today is one step in the journey. We have to prepare for the next one now. All right, Coach, thank you so much. Congratulations to you and your team. Let's head our, back upstairs now to Ricardo and Lejay, who will take us through right. the presentation. Yeah, I don't know, Lejay Williams, how they're going to be better than they were today because they were superb. Maybe you could say that they can start better next week. But my goodness me, Clarendon College took the lead, but they unraveled. And Glenn Muir were fantastic tonight. And maybe we spend the next few moments talking about Andrew Peart, Lejay Williams, because I, I mentioned it throughout the course of the match, but assistant oh, coach to Miguel Jason Coley at Jamaica White. College for a long time Kyle Gordon and Oren was at Augustown in the Premier League the for a bit as well when he took over at Jamaica College. By Jamaica Dixon. College standards, did and not have a great Douglas season, Ford. did not have a great time at Augustown either, and so questions about his ability as a head coach but my goodness me those questions have been thrown out the window now yeah and you know something that i've lamented you know this is my second year doing schoolboy football and something i lamented from my first was i think that andrew peart is one of the best coaches on the island and the reason why i've always lamented that is not only tactically but i think his man management is really good maybe it wasn't at its best initially when he got those early jobs but you can see with this Glenure team how much these players the players the nine players that they have returned from last year how much they have improved a kyle gordon going from one goal to ten to scoring and assisting in this final you get me so i i, I think andrew peart i i you know I, i'm a sucker for tactics i'm a sucker for tactical setups you saw you saw the things that he was mentioning his final third entries his second ball recuperations and yes I do understand that he does need to be better next time because something that I mentioned before the game was the, the tempo that they needed to play at. I think that especially when they, when Kleinan went down to 10 men, they tried to play at Kleinan's tempo, which was a frantic one. If they are taking the game by, a, by the scruff of the neck, slowed the game down, play at their usual tempo, we probably could have seen five or six goals against Clarendon, but I think it, they're youngsters at the end of the day. Emotions is going to get to them much easier than what we usually see. But 